Welcome back to Tom Talks. Uh, we are joined today by Max Kelly, who runs our audit, risk, and compliance desk at Tom Executive. Welcome, Max, to Tom Talks. Hi, Rich. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks very much for uh, again volunteering to be here and to give us an update of the market. Certainly, in your field of can we just call it ARC? Let's call it ARC. Risk and compliance. Um, but before we just we 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 dive sort of head first into ARC. Can you just give us a little bit of a background for those people that don't know you that might watch this? A uh, bit about your background, how long you've been at Tom, and yep. the areas in which you cover. Okay, so I have been at Tom, as hopefully you remember, for four years, uh, during which time we have recruited across internal audit, operational risk, compliance, financial crime, and IT risk. Uh, prior to that, I was recruiting in the UK for a small recruiter who focused on financial services for four years. Fantastic. Max, um, across the wider space that you and your team do recruit for, can you tell me over the last, let's call it 12 to 18 months, what has been driving demand and what um, within that, that sort of more specific group of skill sets that you covered, uh, which skill sets have been in demand? Yep. Um, so for us, I would say technology risk has been a huge focus for us over the last year. Uh, so I, I think I had a look at our statistics and hiring across tech risk and audit is up 25% on the period previous. Um, also compliance, um, we're still seeing huge demand there, not so much in institutional banking. I think um, over a year ago there was a huge demand for IB compliance professionals. I think a lot of that was driven by some of the reforms such as the OTC derivative reforms. Yep, yep. Um, but that has really tapered off now. So we've actually seen a 50% slump in IB compliance hiring, um, but that's actually been uh, replaced by wealth management. So there's still a huge demand for compliance professionals in the wealth space. Uh, I think within the last year alone, all of the big four Australian banks have had an enforceable undertaking. So there's still a huge pressure for them to show the regulators that they're serious about things like conduct. Yeah. Um, and I would say the, the final skill set that we've seen the biggest increase in is also financial crime. So I, it's interesting because this is a space that we've only played in for a couple of years. But even though we've seen over the last four years a 50% increase in headcount in financial crime, the number of reported incidents has actually gone up 500% in the same time period. Oh my word, okay. So if um, we take from today and we try and crystal ball the next 12 to 18 months, do you see a similar pattern with regards to the demand for a certain skill set or do you see something different sort of, you know, creating an, uh, an urgency or a need? I think it, it might be a little bit more of the same, but um, if you look at both of the regulators' focuses for this year, um, ASIC has said that IT security is going to be top of the list. So uh, all of the financial services firms have got to show that they're serious about uh, protecting customer data. That's a huge focus. And also conduct. This is the whole cybercrime piece? Yeah, so um, we're seeing, we've seen probably a 20% increase in hiring across IT security and IT risk literally within the last year. So we're putting a renewed focus on that. Um, and that comes alongside culture and conduct as well. So I think if you look at the UK, banks have got specific conduct teams, whereas in Australia, they conduct has become very much part of an existing function. So if you have um, within ARC, you have one skill set or another, and you say, so let's say we crystal ball this, and, and you're correct, and these skill sets are going to be in demand, and certainly if we were conscious on one, staying in a job and staying employed, and secondly, um, trying to either reinvent ourselves or focus on those roles that might be perhaps a little bit more lucrative, a bit more in demand. Where would you suggest um, uh, the professionals that you deal with focus on their yeah. skill sets and development? So, so the skill sets that we see um, increasing in demand and also the associated salary way above inflation are things like, it's still IT security. Um, but also you're seeing a number of data professionals moving into the risk space because it's the new age of data science and you've suddenly got all of these different processes and tools for capturing data 
and the regulators are obviously putting a lot of pressures on banks to make sure that that data is handled correctly. And so you're seeing a lot of people being pulled out of the data management teams into risk teams and obviously charging a premium for their services. So we're seeing a lot of that and um, conduct is, is still going to be a huge driver. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a black check, yeah. but um, you're seeing a lot of people that have come off the major conduct programs for various banks that are going to be in high demand. Um, so our job as recruiters is to, is to find those people and just hold their hands through um, hopefully their next transition. So you mentioned the IT risk, you mentioned conduct, there's yeah. certainly skill sets that are in demand. In the same breath though, you also mentioned that there's probably a, a, a dearth, a, a sort of a, a lack of abundance in those skill sets on shore. Um, for um, the types of staff here that are um, outside of those um, two skill sets, for our clients that um, you know, employ people across the ARC spectrum, which skill sets do you think they may be in danger of, of at risk of losing? So we've obviously spoken about IT risk at length, but I still think that the, the generation of candidates with that skill set is falling behind industry demand. So if you actually look at the major, what you call hunting grounds for IT risk assurance people, it's going to be the likes of the big four audit firms and consultancies. And what's going to happen is the banks are continually going to take people from those firms and we're going to find that places like PwC, KPMG, Deloitte, um, Ernst & Young are actually going to have to go offshore to try and replace that headcount. Um, so you're actually going to see those consultancies suffering and you're going to see banks having to pay more for candidates with that skill set. Terrific. Any other comments you want to make about the, the next 12 to 18 months? Um, I read uh, something interesting this week. There's new legislative reform coming through for superannuation during the middle of the year. So um, I know that we'll be spending a lot of time making sure that we network with compliance professionals with superannuation experience. And, um, and if that's you, I would suggest getting your CV ready. All right, Max. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure having you on at Top Talks. It's always great talking to you too. We'll, uh, we'll end it there. So yes. thanks very much. Thank you for joining us again. It's been a pleasure to present just a quick update on the audit risk and compliance market here at Tom Executive. And we look forward to the next installment, which I think might be around data science and analytics and business intelligence. So that's it for me for now. Thank you. Bye -bye.